Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm here. You hear background. I'm sitting in the car. The girls are out here playing as I'm trying to make this video quick. Um, the uh, video I wanted to make that uh, I hope helps a lot of people is how I got my degree uh, using mainly uh, military credits um, and then clepping and then taking some courses online. So I'm going to name some schools I used and you can look around. I just know that what how I did it, I did it as cheap as possible to get my bachelor's degree. Um, first rule is it, the schools I use, they are accredited um, and that's going to be the key thing is make sure you find a school if you try to do it my way that's accredited. Um, it's extremely important because you can be taking courses and you can't transfer them and you want to find out what type of uh, um, school, what type of accreditation the school has because there's three different levels. Uh, I might be wrong, there might be more than that, but I just know the, the three. Um, so I'm gonna jump into what I did. So when you go to basic training, as you should know, you have your uh, joint service transcript you can print out and I, I did a video on that. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna get your, I had no college, I think I had like six credits maybe when I went in because uh, I did a summer semester uh, at a school uh, at a university uh, and went in, completed basic training, completed uh, 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 OSOT, AIT, um, um, and then right there you have credits just from basic training. I'm trying to, I'm trying to break it down for people that had went to basic training, AIT, if you went to OSOT, it's all going to be the same. Um, you earn credit for your basic training part and your skill part. So, and this is for the army side. I don't know how the other sides work, but I imagine they're the same. So you get like marksmanship, uh, physical fitness. You get like four credits for basic training, uh, at least back when I was in. And my, that's what my, uh, my joint service transcript says. And then you go to your tech school, okay? So here's where some people might not know. You're gonna get training for, I'm thinking tech school because my son was at Air Force. Your AIT or Air Force is tech school. Um, your AIT, you're going to get so many credits, right? Co actual college credits. Now you might get them in the lower division or the upper division. Lower division means your, it goes towards your associate's degree. Upper division means it'll go towards your bachelor's degree. And if you're going for your bachelor's degree, some people don't get associate's degree. And of course your lower level will go to that. Um, and then you have your technical, uh, vocational, uh, point, uh, credits. So you might have some credits that will go towards uh, if you're going to be like at a carpentry masonry, um, plumbing degree or certificate, they'll have credits that will transfer to a school that might offer those. And ultimately it's going to be up to the school. I'll say that straight up front. So on the basis of your joint service transcript from basic training, AIT, then if you went to WLC, PLDC, like that's back in the day, uh, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called leader course now and then you know any of your nco schools you're going to get credit for actual call it college credit and they'll show up as soon as you complete and complete that school it'll show up on your joint service transcript then you will get also credit for being once you become a, an nco uh each level gives you so many credits uh in most i don't want to speak out line in in the mos's that I've uh, talked to people about and helped them with, they were given points. So in my situation, when I got to uh, E5, it was in some of my, I had a, uh, two or three different MOSs. Um, I had like 31 college credits just for holding that rank in that uh, MOS for a period of time. Uh, and everyone's going to have that. And then when, and then if you're in E5, you get so many. And then when you get to E6, you get so many. And then when you get to E7, E8, and E9, each one is broken down to your 10, 20, 30, 40 levels. And it goes across and tells you how many credits you get. So now, to get those credits for your joint service transcript, all you have to do is send them to the school, right? And actually, if you log on to joint service transcript, I made a video and had some errors in it, but I'm just leaving it up there anyway. Um that they'll send you the school, they'll send it to the school. You just go in there electronically, pick out the school with the drop down menu, and they'll send it to the school. And I think like if it's not listed, you can print out a form, but mo most of the schools are listed that I saw. 
Um, so that's how you get your military credit. I mean, and you could, I mean, if you're out of basic training in AIT, I can't imagine you not having probably 10 or 12 uh, college credits that are just free. You know, and all you have to do is get them on a transcript uh, for your promotion and for your military uh, stuff. So it's 100% it's, it's worth it. And I talked about credit banking before as well. Um, and that's what you want to do. So back on to how I got my degree. So I had my credits, right? I started clepping, right? So a clep is a free, this is military, uh, National Guard, Reserve. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same process for if you go to an education center and you put in, you go to the clep website um, and you register for the test. And as long as you're military, um, it might be only active duties free, but I'm not sure. You, uh, you pay a small fee to take the test. Um, and I did them all when they were free. Um, so I went in, take an English test. Like you want your gen eds done, right? Gen eds are the pain, right? It's your English. It's your English one, English two. It's your science. You have to take a basic science, a general science and, and a general math. And uh, that, that's about it. There might be more, but that's the average that you, you have to do those four main uh, courses for your gen eds. So you're going to need your gen eds done, right? And then you're going to have your core courses. You're going to have to first pick a degree that you want, right? So this is purely talking about if you're trying to get your degree. So right now, a lot of schools have associate's degree and bachelor's degrees in general study. So if you really don't know what you want to do, but you want to get started, pick that general studies uh, associate's or bachelor's degree. Or, and there's a difference between liberal arts and general studies. Like the liberal arts, it has some, not they have specific requirements, but they're way more lenient. General studies is, you pretty much, they're gonna accept anything that you've done. Um, so for me, what I did is I actually, the, the university, I got my first degree. I um, initially signed up to do liberal arts just for them to accept all my credits. And then I transferred to a degree as I earned more credits. Um, so as you move, you go to your NCO schools, um, you get your credits. You, just each time you get to go to a new school, you transfer Like I have couple extra like side courses I went to they give you one or two credits there's a bunch of stuff that that the joint service transcript will list that you're like I don't even know I mean I got college credit for that because it's like a six week course and I went to and a couple other like a, a ton of them actually that I have one there and, and I imagine a lot of you will have them too like just little I think I got one credit for going to the sharp you know that, that new thing and then the the I was the uh went down they sent me like the suicide prevention thing just to pass away time uh, past time and it was like maybe uh i got two credits for that for public speaking or something so you want to transfer them to a school so i had my one school that i didn't take any classes right the one i got my first degree from so i didn't take any classes in that school and I'm, I'm gonna let you know like american military university is a good one a uh thomas edison state university is a good one. They're all credited, you know, and it, they're online schools. So back when I was younger, uh, uh, online schools were um, looked at kind of sideways, right? Uh, because people didn't know about them. So my, when I got my first degree, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Like it was a big deal to me, but a lot of people, you know, it, if they knew it was an online school, they probably were like, oh, well, you know, is it accredited? I mean, that was the main thing. And I'm like, well, the army's not paying for it, right? If, if it's, if you're using VA benefits or tuition assistance or federal TA, it's accredited. They're not going to pay for the school. So you don't have to worry about that. If you're on active duty National Guard Reserve and doing, you know, the, the FTA, they're, they're not paying for it unless it's accredited. So, but there's just the, the stigma with different accreditations back in the day, especially with the online schools, because back then you could $65, you could be a doctorate, you know what I mean? From, you know, Abraham George Washington Lincoln School, you know, like stuff like that. So nowadays, Penn State, Texas A&M, all those schools have online schools. I mean, Harvard, you can take classes online, you know, so I'm pretty sure. Um, so I use the one school as like my, basically my transfer all my credits that I'll eventually get my degree from there. But as I'm going up through my military rank and doing these other courses, I'm going to transfer those credits into that school. So what I did was Penn Foster edu right it has the lower accreditation right so like pence foster you can't transfer those credits to um uh, they do have some uh 
agreements with schools that the credits will straight transfer. But my, I, they're a different, they're like regional and national accreditation are two different ones. So I forget which one they are and the other one won't take their credits, right? But Penn Foster is extremely cheap and there is no, I mean, you have a timeline to get courses done, but it's like a year and you, you can pay like an extension fee if you don't get it done. So between working in the military and then deployments and different things, I would sign up for Penn Foster courses because I knew I could knock them out pretty quick. And if I couldn't, they would just sit there and I wouldn't lose any time. There wasn't that eight week, excuse me, there wasn't that eight week window or 16 week window that even some of the courses I took that were online, you, ha you it was just like going to college. You had to sit there. I mean, you had to log in, you have to do different things. So for Penn Foster, I got my gen eds, right? I, they, they actually have a gen ed uh, certificate program. They actually have a gen ed certificate program, which gives you all your basic courses, your two Englishes, your uh, math, your science, uh, humanities, I think was one of them you could take. And it was like an art or music class you could pick. <laughs> so I clipped out my, my math, right? So I already had math, but I just took it again because it was part of that program. You can take individual courses at Penn Foster and sign up, or you can take their little, you can do an associate's or bachelor's degree from there, or you can um, take gen ed certificate. They have a couple of different certificates set up that they're giving you the college credits that you need. So when I saw the gen ed stuff, uh, and I initially did like HVAC there, I did a couple of different things at Penn Foster. And it's all online, but the HVAC thing I struggled because you have to do hands-on stuff. But working towards my degree, I did the gen ed certificate, took, knocked out those courses. They're, um, they are time consuming and you need to, um, uh, uh, you don't need to stay on top of it. I wouldn't say that, but it's not, it's all open book. So that's what I like. So it's open book. You can take a test. If you fail it, you get to retake it. Right. And you only have so many sections for each thing. And then you take your proctored exam. So what I did was I knock out my class courses as soon as possible and then I use my unit as my proctor right you can use education center you can use somebody with back then I don't know if it's the same way now you had to have somebody with a bachelor's degree they basically you elect them as your proctor and you mail that stuff to the uh, uh, if they're not your training center uh, ed, or education center I'm sorry or training center it would work too because I use both um, and I think you can probably use your commander you can use anybody that's pr higher ranking than you you can use them uh, now what you do is you sign them up during, as you're taking courses, you elect a proctor, right? I even had uh, uh, diff, multiple proctors for different things because of moving. So you sign up for your proctor. They mail, once you're done with your like last course, right? In that, like let's use English 101, they mail your proctor a test for you to take, right? And then you go set up with them, you set up a time, you sit down in front of them and you knock it out, right? Now, the only downside, if you're, I'm not a good writer, right? I barely can speak English, let alone write it, right? So you, it's a lot of writing. It's a lot of, you're answering the questions and they're asking you to answer two sentences to five sentences to, you know, the English one straight up is you're, you, you, you don't have to, I don't think you take a proctored exam with the English one. I'm almost positive. It's been years ago. Is you actually just write um, a couple page, um, I wouldn't say it's a thesis, but on a topic and then you submit it and uh, they grade your paper. So, and that's your final, but let's say math, they're gonna send you a math or art. Let's use art. It'll be a lot of questions about art history. And then you gotta write like, okay, answer these first, they're usually 20 questions. Answer these first 10 questions with um, um, two sentences minimum. And then the next page is where it gets like, answer them with five sentences. So if you're if you're not that good at writing, and I. It's, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Just take your time, especially for me, it's stretching something out and believe it's not that hard. I'm just letting you know, like, I remember the first time I got it, I'm like, okay, how am I going to think of this stuff or answer a question uh, off of, you know, turning because it's in the books, it's like a two or three sentence answer, but then they're wanting you to take that two or three cent sentence that they're talking about turning into five sentence. So if you know, what I mean, then you know what I mean, right? So you take those, you end up getting a transcript, right? So I got like 40 some credits from Penn Foster, right? I took my gen eds from there because to me, that was the easiest route um, for me to get my gen eds. Uh, if you're better at um, sitting in front of a classroom, then sit in front of a classroom. I'm telling you how I did it with in between 
the, the moves, the traveling, the working, the, the going overseas, different things, right? So the thing with Penn Foster is like the university that I was going to, you they didn't accept or I, I had all my credits sitting waiting to actually I was in a degree program that general studies program they won't accept Penn Foster straight you have to take your Penn Foster and sign up for ACE now ACE you probably heard or if you know what your joint transcript services or joint service transcript I'll keep getting that backwards um, you're going to uh, you'll see that they're ACE approved ACE is the one that um that rates them. So what you're going to do is then ACE has a whole nother section. Like if you take stuff at work, classes at work, cl classes at places like Penn Foster and certain colleges that aren't accredited, they match the ACE accreditation, which then the other school approves ACE credits. So it's basically you have to go through ACE, send your credits to ACE, and then send your ACE transcript to the schools. So ACE is like the standard, right? It's like the American Council something. It's like the standard. So if you're a, I might be saying this backward. If you're a regional, right, school, and you're trying to go to a national school that's a higher um, accreditation, you go through them. Or if it's national to regional, I, I forget. I'll put it down below. So you start transferring those credits, and those credits start filling in those core courses, right? Those gen eds. So that's what I did. You have your gen eds from Penn Foster. I clepped out my math. I did the extra math. I transferred all those from ACE to. Um, the university I was going, right? So by that time, I had probably all my 60 credits, which are your your first two years, covered, right? I took a math, I, I mean, I took a, a music, I took a art, right? And they all transferred to the university. So all my higher level, level training I did in the military, like once you're above, uh, um, once you start doing certain levels, like certain uh, NCO schools or certain different things, you start getting up, and depending on what your MOS is, you're getting your credit for going to that school, and then you're getting that credit for holding that MOS, right? Like, basically, experience uh, stuff. They start giving you uh, credit based off that. So, um, those started going to my upper level parts that I need to finish in my degree, right? So, as I started transitioning, um, I picked the degree that all my credits would line up to you know, the majority of them, right? So then I had a bunch of like uh, electives that I need to do. So for electives for me, and it's changed, so th this is the only thing you're gonna have to look into is I took a bunch of FEMA courses. So FEMA are one credit courses, right? And they are ridiculous. Like they are, you you are, you, you're, if, you, if you're old school and you know the Army Correspondence courses, they're like that. Like you're sitting there, you're reading them, you're taking the test, you're, it's just, like, you're just going through them, bam, 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 you know, studying, I mean, you're reviewing the handout, and you're taking the test, reviewing the handout, taking the test, right, and then you get a FEMA transcript, so I had, like, I probably had, I think the max was, like, 37 in one credit courses, right, so that filled up all my electives, so I misspoke earlier saying that I had my first 60 credits, my first 60, uh, I had my gen ed, plus all my, almost all of my core courses for my bachelor's degree done bachelor's degree done uh completed at that point but i had a whole bunch of electives that i had to do so electives can be one credit right electives are just like free courses right so i look at them as just free money for the school because you really don't i mean electives are some people electives are just like getting you more experience in different areas where if you're just trying to get your degree it's kind of a, they're kind of a waste of time so i took the fema courses like knocked out all of them out right and ended up doing um like 38 of them. So I had all my electives taken from the my from my four year degree. All my electives were covered from either FEMA or the like basic training, individual credits I got, or like some of the small courses that you take in the military that you might get one or two credits for. So now, when the part you have to go to school for specifically is when you pick your degree, you most schools will only transfer up to 75% of your credits from anywhere else towards your degree, which makes sense. Like it would be great. If they would transfer all of your credits and you had 120 credits from your military and your experience to get your degree, so far I haven't found a school that did that. And if you know of a school that did, does do that, that's accredited, put it down below. Um, because I'll probably just be doing that as well just, just to do it. So um, so the way it works is 
you're going to, like, I ended up enrolling in this school and picking a degree that I knew was going to, like, most schools will have a what if. So you have all your credits there and you'll, it'll say an evaluation program. It'll kind of, you got, you have to take the time to just go through, like, kind of what you want to do, right? And if you know specifically what you want to do, you might not get as many credits, but you still can get a lot of credits. So there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't know what you want to do, um, you kind of go through and look, right? And I knew what I wanted to do when I was working for my first degree. So I knew I just wanted a degree and I could match up for some things, right? So like if you're an MP, criminal justice degree, you're going to get a lot of credits. If you went to a lot of schools and you, you, you finished your, your uh, MP, I know uh, I, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can do if you have certain MOSs for your degree. So once I was aligned up with the evaluation program and used, I picked a degree that that I wanted, but also had a majority of my credits were going to transfer. I had up to, I had to take like six courses because most schools, you they want you to, before they issue you a degree, you have to take 15 credits that I've seen so far. Some are up to 75%, but 15 credits to get that actual degree. So that's, that's five, cl- I mean, that's five classes, right? So it's not, it's not a lot, right? They're the, they're the four level classes usually in three levels. So they are a little bit harder. They're more writing intense. Now, Writing on a computer when you're at a university is what you're doing. Like Penn Foster stunk because you couldn't. It was it was actually like the pen writing, right, with a pen. Uh, and my handwriting sloppy anyway, so that's horrible. So you're gonna you want to take those courses. And what I did is I took one course a semester or two courses a semester. So I did two courses a semester for. We're getting ready to go to the store, so I'm trying to knock this out now. So I took two courses a semester for my first degree. Now, the only thing that sucked was in between training and in between different things, like I I had a two-year plan, right, to get it done slowly. And it ended up turning into a three-year plan, which still wasn't that big of a deal. So when you're taking those courses online, the core courses, you do have to actually register. And uh, I'll give you my breakdown of my last, my, my second degree from Thomas Edison State University. For your, for your classes, you're going to log in, you're going to do the assignments, but then you have to do, um, what do they call Like, you have to talk with other students. You have to, like, go in, the the professor puts a, like, a reference is something. You have, like, you, a discussion. Right, a discussion. Like a back and forth, like, like right. chat and forward thing. Right. So you're, sit, so you're going to sit there and talk, because she has her degree from there, too. Mm-hmm. You're going to sit there and talk, and you make a comment, and then... You put your comment on what the professor says, and then you got to respond to two other people. The only downside about that is when I was doing it was people, like, wait till the Sunday before. So the way it works is you have, like, Sunday at midnight is when the first week starts, or 0001, to 11.59 that following Sunday. So you have you have Wednesday is whenever you have to put your – now, I'm just saying from the, the school, the second school I went to, that you um, had to respond by Wednesday, and then you had to – um, respond to two other people by that following Sunday plus turn your assignment. So it kind of stunk with that because you had to log in a little bit more than you wanted to because a lot of people weren't knocking out like the, their comments right away. And you had to put in your comment plus do your respond to two other people. So there's people late because you have no control over that. But besides that, it was it was pretty simple. The professors and stuff, they, if you email them, they get back to you. The assignments, you know, they are upper level assignments. So they're, they're uh, writing intensive. The my first degree was a little bit different. We didn't have to, there, it was just doing the assignments. You didn't have to uh, do the discussions. But now it's all about doing the discussions because it's probably because it was a lot easier before and they weren't thinking maybe people, they wanted the engagement. Um, so that's how I knocked out my degree while I was serving and while I was doing the things. So you have your CLEP that you can do and you can CLEP, if you don't want to do Penn Foster, the Gen Ed assert that I was talking about, you can CLEP out on everything. They have a ton of your... Uh, general education requirements um, that you can get through CLEP, right? Like I saw, already signed up my son who just left. Like he was going to take all of his gen eds before he even left. And and if you're military, they're free. Our reserve or National Guard, I'm not sure uh, right now how it is. Uh, I imagine that if it, it's like before, they're just free. You just go to a training center that has them or you set them up to community college or some high schools have them. You go and you take the test and it's worth it. If you fail, it doesn't hurt you and it's free. And then you, and then you kind of get the idea. Like I failed, I took the English one, the chemistry one and math one, I passed the math one, English one, I completely bombed. And then the chemistry one, I wasn't that far off on that one. And I was going to retake it. I just ended up doing the gen ed, um, through Penn Foster. So I'm not 
again, I, I keep re referencing Penn Foster because it's what I did. I really enjoy Penn Foster. I still take random courses at Penn Foster now, but they, you have to make sure that ACE accepts those credits. That they'll, If ACE doesn't accept them, unless you go to one of the schools that they already have approved that will accept their credits, they're not going to accept your credits. Like, Because I took some courses that are even in a program that they have set up that some of them, some of the courses will transfer and some of them won't. So you have to watch that. And I got my first degree in 10 years. It took me 10 years from the time I graduated high school to get my first degree. And then um, it was another, I don't know how many years before I started hitting school again, heavy, uh, more of a focus uh, degree. So that's the way I went from, you know, a 1.6 in high school, joining the military to getting a bachelor's degree. It just takes some time and it's worth it. Again, Penn Foster, it, there is no crunch time. If you roll, enroll, you have time to do your courses, but you want to make sure the courses will transfer to ACE. And you go on to ACE, and ACE will let you know what courses they accept from Penn Foster. All you do is search uh, courses, and you type in Penn Foster, and it'll have a whole list of what they accept. And then it'll even have the dates of when, like from if you took the course from this date to this date. So some run out, so you just want to go into ACE and check to make sure that it's taking that current English 101, take that current English 102 that Penn Foster's offering. And then the process is from a, a credit, a program that you're taking that a university might not accept, you go through ACE. And ACE is saying, yes, this is a real certified course, and we agree with the accreditation, and then the other school's going to accept it. So you have the ACE for your military transcript, which is through the joint service transcript or joint transcript, or joint service transcript. And then you have your ACE for your Penn Foster courses, or if you took a lot of extra, like if you were in the military or if you're in the National Guard Reserve and you take, um, you took courses outside, like for a job that you work for, a lot of, Penn, ACE has a lot of uh, like Coca-Cola, Walmart credits. Like I was researching that and there was a ton of like just random places that if you went to those classes, you get like one or two college credits. And that's where you want to really want to pick up. So I'll hit on FEMA real quick. So the FEMA courses are the same thing. The FEMA, the school has to accept FEMA. Right now, um, Frederick, um, Frederick uh, Community College has a program that if you uh, take those FEMA courses, you can transfer them and get an associate's degree. But it's like $69 per credit. So if you have that money, that, that's a great way to still use FEMA. But like Thomas Edison right now, they don't accept... FEMA anymore. Like when I went there, they accepted FEMA. So I had tons of credits from FEMA and it just helped out amazingly. Now there are some schools um, that will still accept FEMA, but I don't know any, I don't know personally of any of them, but besides French Community College, and then you can actually get an associate's degree in uh, FEMA, like federal emergency, emergency management, I think it is an associate degree, but it's, it's expensive. Like it's, it's $69 per credit. So one class is three credits. So you understand you're going to be digging in your pocket. Uh, and I don't think they I don't think the VA or FTA will pay for that. So th there's some other, the army correspondence courses. Um, there, there are some, uh, courses back in the day you could take to get like one or two credits but right now the other thing i receive credits for are our if you go into army skill port right the skill port or army skill soft i always get them wrong um if you put in army skill either one it's going to pop up and i imagine you know what i'm talking about there's a section under that says ace right so i got a I don't even know how many credits I have from there. You go under ACE and they're already proved programs for what I was talking about, that ACE certified program. So you go in there, knock those out. You have to, you already know what, you already know what that's like. If you already did, you have to watch the videos, take the pre or pick the pretest, watch the videos and do hundred percent watching them. It's not like back in the day, we could just fast forward through them. And then you take the final test and they're already college approved, right? And on there, there's a link that'll say obtaining credits. And basically what you have to do is you print out that link, right? And you um, have your, whoever watched you take those tests is your proctor, basically. It doesn't need to be anybody special. Uh, if they change it, then they change it, but it could be anybody you want. As long as there's somebody that watched you take those tests, right? At the end of the FEMA, the final exam, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, it's Skillsoft. 
they're gonna uh, you're gonna have that sign in and mail it on to the into the address that that's on that form and what they do is you get like one credit two credit three credit for different courses so they're easy college courses to knock out um, and to get those free those electives and some of them might even hit some of your like you need a computer course uh, is one of your I don't know if that's under a gen ed but you need to have a computer course so, so that's something you need to have in right gen ed. so <coughs> the computer course you can knock out and ace will give you three credits and then you just go back on ace you go to skillsoft and then request them to add that to your ace transcript right and I'll put the link for ace below and I'll put the actual link strictly to what I'm talking about because ace is kind of tricky if you just go to their website but if you do skillsoft I mean skillsoft there's probably a good free 40 or 50 college credits on Skillsoft, um, on Army Skillport. That if you do and have somebody sign off that they proctored you when you took those final exam, it's free credits. Plus, it's um, you get completion certificates. So you and it, by hours. So if the I, I'm not sure how the the promotion thing works anymore. Uh, I know they had some changes, and I didn't pay too much attention to the changes. But you have those completion certificates. Those are all promotion points. Those are all points you can use and. You're using your you're you're doubling up. You're you're using those as promotion points, as correspondence courses, because uh, that's what you get credit for. And then you get you get transfer the college credits, so you have college credits and promotion point credits at the same uh, uh, time. Especially again, like if you have that 798, or you have that you know they're not selecting that many people, and that you need to have the highest score possible. That's a great way to do it. But again, this is specifically how I got my uh, degree, and it, it was I ne I never once sat down in a college classroom to get my degree. Um, I, I had the credit, I only had like maybe three credits from uh, of the school in the summer before I shipped out. Um, but besides that, all my credits have, have um, I got online and I completed my degree online and completed two or three other degrees online and, and they're all, it's there, there's no difference. If it's an accredited school, right? Like does does my degree, hold weight for uh compared to other places i i have no clue if i want to I, I went i became a teacher for a little bit i nursed for a little bit my degree was perfectly fine it was just as accredited as anybody else's so that's where you have the stigmas going away where when i was younger it was a little different but the stigma for online schools like I, i'm repeating myself penn state all the different schools have world campus they have all these major online because it's a feasible way to learn uh, and I highly suggest if you're in the military and your your goal is to get a degree, then maybe use this as advice to get your degree like I got mine. And make sure that if you have any questions to message me, because some of the stuff I'm saying might sound a little tricky or, or I might have misspoke on something as you're looking it up. I mean, I'll try to respond and I'll also post down below all the links. But my wife got her degree like the same way. Her stuff was transferred from Penn State because she went there and she had a ton of credits. <laughs> and she took all of her classes at Thomas Edison State University online. It was it, it, it was that easy. It was the federal tuition assistance paid for it. Uh, VA benefits pay for it. They're all covered and it's all for free. You just have to stay off, stay on top of it. Um, and, and if that's your goal. And even if your goal is not to have a degree um, and you're gonna go to a trade school, like if you're a plumber and you want to go to like one of those nine month uh, uh, certificate or diploma programs when you get out, if you you know if that's something you want to do, that's credit that'll go towards that under the vocational side of your uh, joint uh, service transcript. All right, so if anybody has any questions, let me know.